WACF board members and donors whose names appear on this wall behind me, and it's a special afternoon for the Wawasee Area Conservancy Foundation. It's This is a, a dream that uh, many of us have had for a long time. How do we honor those who have, who have spent uh, the last 20 years supporting this organization to make sure that this lake uh, stays pure and clean and and we pass it on to the next generation and better than we found it when, when we arrived. How appropriate and fitting it is that we uh, honor Mr. Lilly uh, with this donor wall. Uh, the words that you see just below his relief uh, are probably familiar to many of you. They're in, they, they're in the preface of his book, Early Wawasee Days, and that's exactly uh, how he felt about this lake. He found it at this delectable spot at the center of his own personal Elysian plain, which for him was the, a peaceful, the most peaceful place in his universe. And uh, the, the lake played an important part in his life uh, all the way through. He, uh, he spent at least a month at the lake every year from 19, 1888 until 1976. Just think of that, 88 years of coming to the lake in the summer. It was a refuge for him, a, a, a place to hide from the the, the rigors of the so-called pill factory, as he called it. Married life. Married Evelyn Fortune first. Uh, they came to Lake Wawasee as, on their honeymoon. And uh, it was uh, and when he married then Ruthie, uh, one of the tests for her is whether or not she was uh, uh, taken by Lake Wawasee. And she was not only taken, but she encouraged him to double his time spent at the lake. And so they not only spent all of August, they would come back in the winter and they would uh, be here and do some ice boating on the lake. And, uh, so made two trips a year. Uh, uh, when he wrote his will, he made sure that he uh, passed on those properties uh, basically to his family members without restrictions except to keep them in the family and to, uh, and to, and to treat the environment and the surroundings uh, properly. Some of you may know that uh, Mr. Lilly uh, wrote a little poetry now and then. And uh, I have two little poems that, I, that I'd like to read share with you. Jubilation. To purge, reject, expel by quick catharsis, a winter's ill-digested accumulation of discords, doubts, fatigue, and business parsons. We have some very special people here and on this wall. You all know the threshold to get on the wall, but what you might not know is if you sum up the giving from all these people, it's over three and a half million dollars. That is what allowed us to buy the property to accumulate the 800 acres. It's, it's a very, Thing that you people have done for the WSDF. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a time. <laughs> With being described as kind of the longest historian, is it makes it sound like maybe you've been around a little too long. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, you never know. Anyhow, thank you. But more than that, thank you, great donors. Everybody here is a donor. But it's really neat that we're finding a way to honor this group and not only honor them, I was explaining to Harriet a minute ago, it shows a lot of other folks how they can, what they can do too, to show their love of the life. Like Mr. Lilling had, you were describing. And we often say that this is a family lake, you know, it's kind of turned into a family type lake. And when it's a family like people want to pass it on to the other members of their family and down the line. And we've heard stories of that. Uh, I heard stories maybe coming from you, Al, that uh, Bill McNagney, who was a member of this board, I think he was a chairman of the place that we, we all love. I credit Dave Brandis with saying, at some point, I probably won't say it as eloquently as he does, but when you love something, you take care of it. Something like that, Dave. That's 
pretty good. <laughs> you love something, you take care of it. And so that's WACF's job. And that's the job these people have made the state saying they will do. Well, they asked me to say a few things about Solomon. In the 70s, he was not in the office as much. But he was in the office. He had his friends. Most of his friends were department heads. There weren't managers or directors or vice presidents. They were the department heads. He would have to come in and have coffee with them. He'd shoot the breeze, tell stories. Great man. Uh, probably the most uh, sentimental thing I can say about Mr. Lilly is that when I got my first promotion, the first person to congratulate me come down to my office with Mr. Eli. <laughs> Put his hand on my shoulder. Said, you have a mighty important job, young man. <laughs> bad I Put my nose to the grindstone. <laughs> when the owner of the company, chairman of the board, says that to you. So I have a lot of respect for Mr. Lilly and the Lilly family. Selling that to Sally. Well, she's a